Hey guys, what's up? Andrew here from Get Into Game Dev. This is my dojo, my pad. When I'm having trouble with programs, I come up here to debug. I own this house. So, I am redoing my Vulcan series. Reason being, we are going to go in depth from the ground. We're going to go into a high level of detail. We're going to check out documentation and all of that, and make sure we really understand this in depth. To start with, a little bit of history of Vulkan. Vulkan is a cross-platform, next-generation graphics API. Similar to DirectX 12 or Metal, it solves a number of issues. Back when OpenGL first started, you had to declare a draw call for every individual point. That was what I did when I was coding. Um, <clears throat> which was fine, but there was a lot of overhead. Then we moved to programmable pipelines where we could just send in a bunch of points and do one draw call. Then we moved to instance rendering where we do one draw call, which repeats drawing a number of different models. After OpenGL 3 or so, a lot of the improvements were just performance improvements. They weren't graphics improvements. After OpenGL 4, we had what was called approaching zero driver overhead with two major improvements. One of them was bindless resources. Typically, when we create a texture, we have an unsigned integer, texture number zero, texture number one. And actually, when we bind that resource, the graphics driver does a little lookup table. And there's some overhead in that. So instead, with bindless resources, we use a 64-bit unsigned integer, which is actually the uh, pointer, the local device memory, which means there's no binding. That was a big improvement, and that's still used in Vulkan. And then we had indirect draw, where we can record a bunch of draw commands and then just run that once. This was in OpenGL 4.3, and that was a massive improvement. However, we still had the issue of multi-threading. So when we create an OpenGL program, that OpenGL context is just tied to one thread, no matter what. So it would be really great to create worker threads and have them upload data individually, but it's just not possible. So the massive improvements in Vulkan come from incorporating multi-threading from the ground up. Um, for this reason, Studying a bit of multi-threaded programming will be super important, will definitely help out with this tutorial. The other issue, okay, so Vulkan is used when we want to squeeze the maximum amount of performance possible out of our system, which either happens if we're trying to do something insane, or secondly, if we're using a low resource system like an Android phone or Raspberry Pi now runs Vulkan as well. Before we get into this series, we just have to ask ourselves a few questions. Number one, is our program multi-threaded? If so, we can get extra performance. Number two, are we working on a resource-limited system, in which case we can get benefits from Vulkan? Anyway, so that was just a little introduction to things. Let's pop over to the code and get into it. See you soon. Um, your arm's sore. Okay, the other... <laughs>